Hi everyone, welcome to Hans Garage. Today we are going to talk about the subframe failure for all E46 models from 1999 to 2005. And I'm going to take you underneath my car just to show you the conditions that my car was in. And I'm going to explain two different options you could do for your subframe reinforcement. I've already jacked up the car and let me just walk you to the subframe mount. Okay, this is underneath the car and as you can see there's a big hole there and there's a big hole here. Okay, so here's a picture of the subframe and the differential on top of the subframe. And the cause of the failure is because the differential mount right here. It's not in the center, but it's in the left side. And that causes all the power coming from the engine and the differential separating the power to the two wheels. The power stress is going to this mount and this front mount diagonally. And over time, it was shaking this way. And because it was shaking this way, the chassis mounts were ripping apart. Or crack so it started cracking first and then ripping apart. Now if you have a manual car, let's say you were driving on the first gear and you rev up to 6,000, 7,000 RPM and you drop your gear to second and dump the clutch, and all that power, all that stress is going to this rear mount and then to the front mount, just ripping it apart. And I think the same thing happens with the automatics whenever you press on the gas pedal. All that stress is just going to the rear mount. And this is the main reason why the subframe failure happens. Alright, so there's two options for reinforcing your subframe. One is the X-Brace. You can buy this at masonengineering.net, not .com. It's about $850 for the top piece and the bottom piece. You have to buy two pieces together in order to have the whole complete set. And the installation is really, really easy. I'm going to show you the pictures and videos later in the video. Um, you have to take off your rear shocks and rear shock mounts and just set the x brace right on top of the shock mounts and then you have to drill two holes onto your chassis which is not too hard and you have to drill the rear subframe mounts I'm going to explain this later with the pictures so you have to drill um, two holes for you to put the long bolt to to mount all the x brace together and another option is you have to take it to a shop <clears throat> and it costs about the whole process costs about two thousand dollars so what they do is they take off your subframe and they will grind all the rust off from your chassis and you have to buy these uh, subframe reinforcement metal sheets which is about hundred fifty dollars online and they will weld it on top of the subframe mounts to strengthen the subframe mounts but I've been researching a little bit and they said um, these the reinforcement goes bad over time I mean because it is a thin metal sheet and they're weld welding on top of the thin metal sheet again so I mean it does go bad that's what I heard I'm not sure and only downside for the x brace is it makes squeaky noises when you're driving. It's not too bad if you have the music up too loud, but you can definitely hear it if it's quiet and you can definitely hear it when you're shifting gears if you're driving manual. Um, but other than that, the x brace is cheaper and you, you're confident when you're driving, you don't have to worry about your subframe ripping apart anymore. You could floor it, you could you know race other cars that you meet, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the option and I'm going to show you how to install the X-Brace. Jack up the rear side of your car and using 17mm socket, take off your wheel. And the shock mount will be 18mm socket. Now it's easier to take off the shock once you support it. 
and I am using my floor jack, but I am also using my tire to make it higher. Take off the 18 millimeter socket, and your shock is free. Now this video is mounting the shock, but it also shows you how you can take it off. And these screws are 13 millimeters. Same thing for the other side. And you can install your X brace and mark where the hole is going to be on the bottom side. And this is one and a half inch drill hole. Same thing for the other side. And I've hammered down so that I can make more room for the X brace. And you can see how weak the chassis is. It bends very easily. Now install your X brace and make sure you have enough room in the bottom. Alright, so this is the final step, and I think this is the hardest step. So what you need to do is, you have to jack up your car, and you have to support the subframe using a floor jack to support this bottom side of the subframe, and it'll hold up the subframe. And you don't touch these mounts, all you need to do is take off these mounts, which is 18 millimeters, and once you take those off, you're going to have to use a half inch drill bit which is 12 inches long and it's about $14 at Home Depot. You have to drill underneath and through the bushing hole, through the original threaded hole, through the chassis. So you're drilling quite a bit. You're drilling about 6 inches. I'm not sure how thick the chassis is but you're drilling through the bottom, through the chassis and that will allow you to install the threaded rod that comes with the X-Brace which kind of looks like this over here let me zoom in, on, let me focus okay. so once you have the hole drilled you have to install this threaded rod and that will allow you to mount the subframe back up to the chassis and the X-Brace together and what you need to think about is you have to care be careful when you tighten the bolt because you want this side to be even with the other side. So what you do is when as you're tightening you have to count how many threads you're tightening and then do the same for the other side because you don't want uneven subframe yeah, and you don't want that clunking noise when you're driving. And that's pretty much it with the X-Brace.